My thanks to the organizers for choosing such an important topic uh, for addressing the challenges we face today. Uh, and the list of skills that we heard from Phoebe was really impressive, uh, and how they the composition of jobs is going to change and the composition of our workforce has to change. I think we, we understand that this is a tremendous challenge for education, tremendous challenge for the existing workforce and for the future. That's not all we need in terms of uh, skills. Just to put it for, for you in a little dramatic way, the recent statistics show that about 40% of the world's population is taking their news from social media today. And the same statistics show that the actual reliability rate of the information that's being projected on the social media is somewhere between 12 and 15%. So we have another challenge of skills. How far are we preparing ourselves and the younger generations to, know, to distinguish fact from fantasy or what we call fake news and how important is that for our success in implementing the 17 SDGs and the Agenda 2030. So I want to add, I want to focus on another dimension of the, the skills challenge or the communication challenge and that is how do we reach out to the vast majority of people on Earth who are not only going to be impacted by global warming, but are also going to be decision makers determining uh, whether that global warming is, can be stopped or not, or whether we can mit mitigate it. And that is really a challenge. In the World Academy of Art and Science, for, uh, for two terms, we had the chairman of IPCC, former chairman of IPC on our board, frequently bringing us up to date with the latest, techno the latest information on what the, uh, the IPCC was projecting on, on climate change. And it was very intelligible to the scientists in the room, uh, even the diplomats in the room, we understood the significance of that uh, information. The question is, how far does the world understand it and how far have we been able to formulate a language of communication that really draws that in. And we had an experience in the World Academy three years ago. We were invited by the United Nations Trust Fund on human security. The concept of human security had been projected by the Academy since 1995. And they asked us to do a survey of UN officials, diplomats, scientists, academies, parliamentarians, and NGOs on how many, how effectively have the, has the UN communicated the importance of human security and the things that need to be done in order to achieve it. And they were not necessarily surprised but certainly disappointed to hear that after 25 years of campaigning, somewhere between 10 and 15 percent of those who were surveyed really had an understanding of this basic concept, which is something relevant to everybody on Earth. What is our human security and how do we communicate it? And so they asked us to join with them in partnership to launch a campaign called the Human Security for All campaign to see what the UN has not, and none of this is intended as a criticism of anybody, but it's intended to magnify the challenge we have, and that's what I'm trying to do, of communicating to the broader population that has to change not only lifestyles, but the decisions they're making in virtually every area of their life. Uh, and that was the, the challenge. And the first thing we did was we approached the consumer electronics industry the con that runs the consumer electronics show every year in Las Vegas, which is the largest technology show in the world, the largest technology companies, businesses in the world that we all know and, and use, and many others, and said, what can you do, what do you think you can do as an industrial 
a business organization to help spread the message that's relevant to every person on earth about their own security. That means food security, health security, employment security, uh, community security, uh, po political freedoms, uh, and the individual uh, security. And they said, well, we've never done anything like this in 50 years. But they finally decided to try, and they themed the 2023 Consumer Electronics Show on the theme of human security for all. And they spelled this out to a few thousand of the top leaders of the industry, and then covered 120,000 technology and business leaders in the industry on this, and they ran about four or 500 seminars, and everyone started with a 90-second messaging on this, uh, on how important this is to companies in the industry who will be determining the impact of the work they're doing and the technologies they develop and the relevance of their activity for human security of all. And we came away very pleased by the amount of coverage they gave. It was calculated that they gave us about two and a half million dollars for coverage on an activity in which we spent about 20,000 or 25,000 dollars of our own. Uh, but we had no idea what they felt about what the result was. And two months later, we had a, a conversation with them, and they said, we unanimously want to continue this messaging. The first time in 50 years we thought of projecting a social message in this very important forum, but we now realize this is really essential for our members and it's essential for the society. And there was almost an emotional, there was an emotional commitment that we've got to do what we can do. We're not doing everything we can do uh, to, to promote this. And from there we went on and talked to parliamentarians and now the Interparliamentary Union of 170 Parliaments of the World has asked for training in how do we actually adjust our legislation to promote human security in all of these areas. And I'm giving this just as an example of the challenge we have. And with the help of Phoebe and leadership of Phoebe, we approached 140 national academies, science academies of the world, and asked them, don't you think that you also have, the academies have a responsibility for each of these areas, there's something more you can do. And the Inter-Academy Partnership agreed to take their number one priority for messaging this year would be a message on the role of science and academies in promoting human security. Now we all know that the climate scientists and many, uh, all of you in the room and many of the organizations and many leading corporations are committed to addressing climate change. But I think we all know that what's being done so far, even though it's unprecedented in the history of the world, it's not quite enough to capture the unprecedented challenges we face. I spoke to the uh, European Conference of Public Health Workers a few mo weeks ago where WHO says that climate is the single greatest threat to health in the world. Number one threat to health in the world is climate change. So I asked the public health workers, what are you doing to stop climate change? And the typical response was, well, that's the job of somebody else. Our job is to deal with the health problems that are generated. But the health workers have the highest level of trust and confidence of the public in the world. What we hear from the health workers has the highest level of confidence and we can believe in it. So can we, I'm giving it as an example, are there other sections of the global society that we can mobilize to join the tremendous effort that's being taken by the organizations that are here and the governments at COP28? because the challenge is so great that we've got to reach out with new innovative techniques, new innovative communication strategies. We need to mobilize the arts. 
We need to mobilize the, the cinema. We need to mobilize the artists, the writers. We need to mobilize every sector of the society in every discipline, not just in those concerned with economics and ecology and climate change, in every academic discipline in to get this message through. Thank you.